Hi, I'm Ken Lobb, and I'm coming to you from the Treehouse. This is Nintendo's top secret R&D facility here in Redmond, Washington. I'm here to tell you about the Nintendo 64 hardware. I'd like to tell you about all the technical specs and, well, actually nobody really cares about technical specs. What matters is fun. You don't call it the fun machine for nothing. This is the N64 game console. It may be smaller than the Super Nintendo, but believe me, this baby is packed with power. And here we have the cartridge slot. As you probably already know, Nintendo is dedicated to the speed of pure silicon. There's only one reason. Better games. You get bigger environments where you have instantaneous access through large 3D worlds. And just as important, you will never see. Now loading. Please wait. And here we have the expansion port. This allows you to upgrade the RAM of the system. There's some other things we can do with this port, but we can't talk about that right now. And here we have the controller ports. I'd like you to notice that we have one, two, three, four. We feel that today's action games, sports games, fighting games, racing games, they all benefit from four player simultaneous play. And with the Nintendo 64, you don't need a tap. And here we have the new controller. This innovative design will revolutionize the way people play video games. Let's face it, a game player's experience begins and ends with the interface. Notice the three prongs. This allows you to hold the controller in three different ways. You have the ability to hold it as if it was a traditional Super Nintendo controller with access to a D-pad, six buttons on the face of the controller, as well as the L and R buttons. You have a new analog style of control with the ability to move in true 3D where the analog stick can read not only which direction you're going in, but the amount of distance you move the stick will apply force. This gives you the ability to do things like measure walking and running or jogging. I could use it for a flying game like a traditional flight stick in an airplane. We're using this C cluster of yellow buttons to fly the camera. This will allow you to do things like zoom in and zoom out of your view and rotate left and right around your character in real-time 3D. The third configuration is to use the analog in your right hand and the digital pad in your left hand. This could maybe be used in a function where you want your character to move around, but you want to be able to have very accurate targeting. This is one of the reasons we have the Z button. The Z button can be used as a trigger while targeting with the analog stick. In the case of the Mario game, the Z button is actually used to get Mario to duck or crawl. 3D control for a 3D world. Here we have the memory pack. Fits in here. We're using this to replace traditional battery back RAM in our cartridges. There are several advantages to having the memory pack in the controller as opposed to in the cartridge. The main is the memory pack will allow you to save several different games on one memory pack. There's other very new and exciting things you can do with the memory pack though. Let's say I have a baseball game and I have all the stats for my Mariners. I go to my friend's house, he has his controller with his memory pack, and I challenge him to play against my team by bringing my controller and challenging him at his house. But probably the coolest part about the controller is that there are so many different ways that you can use the controller, it's going to allow designers to do things that maybe have never been thought of before. In other words, innovation. Innovative controller equals innovative game design. And for those of you with more of a play aloud taste, we're actually going to offer the controller in several different colors. That's about it for the hardware. Now let's go to a little demo of some of the games that will be available for the Nintendo 64. While you're watching these products, remember, fun is the name of the game. Hello! So let me jump into the game. You notice that Mario's standing in this huge field outside of a big castle. Now if I take the control stick and I just move it a little bit, you notice that Mario start to tiptoe. I move a little bit farther, Mario start this kind of slow walk. Crank it and he goes full out sprint. Whip it in circles. Full 360 degree control. 360. And I'm gonna cruise up into this castle because that's where most of the levels are. Go, little man, go. Whee. What kind of skills do you have, little man? Now that I'm inside of the castle, before I go show you a level, I'd like to show you some of the cool things that Mario can do. I'm sure you've seen traditional Mario games. You know that Mario can do things like climb and jump on enemies. But now Mario's got some stunts. Check out Mario, man, doing those backflips. I push the Z and then push jump. Oh. Mario does a layout double backflip. Yeah. Awesome. If I like run along, push Z, jump. Whoa, Mario jumps a mile. Oh, look at that. Did you see him climb? I can get Mario to do things climbing trees. I can get Mario to do things by hanging on ledges. I can do a ton of stuff with Mario. Oh, did you see that? Yo, you see the way he went to that door? I'm kidding. Here we go! <laughs> control stick is cool. It actually allows full 360 degree control. Okay, so I'm gonna cruise along here and jump into this picture. Oops. <laughs> hey, how'd you do that? Actually, it was pretty hard. We had a bunch of R&D guys with busted heads. <laughs> 
this level is kind of cool because there's actually there's swimming levels in the game, there's snow levels, there's other stuff. This level actually involves swimming as well as kind of some traditional platform stuff. However, now it's all happening in a 3D world. That's awesome. There's one other cool area I'd like to show you in the game before we move on to the other products. And that's Bowser. Give him a toss, man. He ain't nothing. Anyway, I think I can go on for about the next 20 hours telling you about Mario 64, but I think it's time we move on to Armand, who's going to show you Pilot Wings. Now that you just finished playing Mario and done a crash course in Techno Babble 101, it's time to talk fun. What's really different about pilot wings is that you get to deal with more than just airplanes. You've got hang gliders, you've got rocket packs, and you've got gyrocopters. It's the most unique flight simming game you've ever played in your life. When you're playing the game, you feel like that you're actually in the game. For example, in this hang glider level, there's gonna be some rings you gotta fly through. That's the first part of it. Now you gotta be sure that you're making yourself steer really steady because the mountains are in close, okay? Now when you go through all the rings, make sure that you pull the joystick down to swoop your plane upward. Oh, swoop just like that, just like that. When you're going in for the landing, you wanna use your A button, or commonly known as the blue button. Use it to slow down speed if you're going too fast. Come in for the landing, and it's an A plus if you hit it. Yo, this is unreal. When you get to the point where you think you're actually good at this game, <laughs> try this. Try getting at least a silver or gold medal in all three events, and you're gonna open your way up into some new hidden levels, like the Cannonball stage. One thing that's really cool about the Cannonball is that you can use the R button to change your camera angle, and that way you get a true feeling of, of yourself being in a real-time 3D environment. The Jungle Hopper. Haha, <laughs> that's one of my favorites. In this area, the object is to jump across the USA. Now, you want to use your analog joystick once again to make sure that you get the longest jump possible. You jump over this building here, and then you go around the bend and try to find the best way to get to the actual goalpost. <laughs> You've still got one more game to play. Shadows of the Empire. I guess you two guys are here to see Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. I guess I'll uh, cut to the chase and get right to the game, which is my favorite part. One of the really unique things about Star Wars is that there are several different game types in this game, actually. You fly a snowspeeder over the ice world, you're a guy in a corridor in a maze type level. There he is. You actually fly in a spaceship. You can do ride a swoop bike, which is kind of like a big speeder bike across the land. And one of the coolest parts in the game that I really like is these big walker guys.
you can actually fly around them and wrap them up with a tow hitch. And you can circle them just like in the movie. And then you can trip them up. I love that part. The world is in real 3D, so I can look around and go anywhere I want. But I can also aim and shoot up at enemies that are high, low. I can strafe and run and shoot in different directions. You're out there, Henry. I can jump over objects. I can actually duck and fire at some of the stormtroopers. I can get different weapons to fight the flamethrower to kill these, these big ice monsters. OK, this is the flying over the Star Destroyer. And here you actually can zoom in to the cockpit. In every level, there's different views. You can zoom in and out. You can watch the guy from a third person view, or you can actually watch from a first person view. Here I have to destroy all these TIE fighters, watch out for asteroids, and as you can see, the explosions here are just as good as the other level. Whoa! Yeah. I just love that part. Here's the swoop bike level. See, I'm chasing this gang inside the town. See how fast it gets. I can zoom out and look in a third person view. See, I can see all the walls. I gotta try and bump them and stop them from getting to loot. I really like how fast this level moves. It's, it's, it's pretty overwhelming at first when you're inside the narrow uh, confines of the town. But you get out later on and you actually get out onto the desert and you go over the Sarlacc pits and you have to do the jumps and go through the canyon. Insane. See here, I can go anywhere I want and look at things. I can um, search the walls and stuff and find hidden items. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's just some of Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. Whoa, those are three great games. We've only scraped the surface. There's, There's more? more? In 64 rules. You still want more?